So we're going to talk about stock and assembly machining today with multiple setups and, and a little bit of fixturing. So we're going to start at the part mode and in the part mode what I've done is I've actually created a plane and a sketch and I do this a little bit more for my reference. This is how I machine on on my machines at home. Um, but what I've done is I've created a quarter inch and then I've created a stock in XY that's based off of that geometry. And, and I, I'll use this, but I also do it for visualization, especially when I start talking fixturing. Uh, the power of SolidWorks here is I can quickly throw in these CAD components and I can tie this stuff together. So if my geometry or my idea changes and I want to instead do an eighth inch or 200 thousands or whatever I want to do, you'll see here in a second that this geometry will automatically update in my fixture. So we're going to pop over to our fixture and what I've done is I've just used the same part in a couple different configurations. Um, I have a mirror image using this plane it's set off of my plate because that's where my stock's going to be. Maybe I'm going to use some mighty bites in this. Um, haven't really thought it out but the point of this is talking about stock. On the other side once this part is faced off we need to be able to come in and locate that and then machine the back side. So by keeping the stock from the part mode in here, I can see where I have to go and what I have to do. Now, I could convert these sketches to the assembly and use them as stock, but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our part manager. So we're gonna go to manage parts, and what I've done is I've picked the four parts that I wanna machine, and when I pick those, this is going to allow me to then select stock. Now, it's also important to note, note here that it will if you are in the part manager and you have this option checked, even though I have four of the same part, it'll split them out if I'm using different configurations. So if I'm doing some whip or I'm doing some you know, unique components, I can use one part with different configurations to machine different pieces. Now, the next thing we have to do in assembly mode, obviously, is we have to set um, our coordinate system so Z is going the right direction because when it adds tool paths in assembly mode, it does look at the Z direction. So for this example, I'll just set it in the corner so my Z is there. And then from our stock component, we'll come in, we'll add some values. So we'll do 3 8 And these are the what I have from my sketch. Um, so we've done 3 8 and Y. and then our Z is 0.375. So you can see I'm now setting that and I can set it per individual component here or I have the ability to set that for multiples. So in this instance, I, I may wanna set that one and instead of going both directions in, in Y, let's say I wanna go zero one direction. So I can fine tune this. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a, I'll just convert these sketches using convert entities and I'll just pick the sketch geometry. That way, again, if I change my original sketch, the geometry updates. Um, you can also set it to use the fixture coordinate system. And if you do that, then it'll align to this X, Y, Z. So now I have um, three eighths and three eighths, but then I, I have my Y, um, which can be 375. So depending upon which settings you're actually running here, that also gives you a little bit of understanding of what it is you're aligning to, assembly origin or FCS. So I could go through each one of these and I can set the same thing. So you can see now my stock lines up here and we'll go to each one and make a change. And in, in this instance, maybe I want to have them independent. Uh, in other instances, maybe I want to have them all follow the same thing. Um, it just sort of depends upon which setting you want to use. And it really comes down to which fixture you're going to run to. So I'll just quickly align mine to FCS. We'll pick our last one. So 
So now our stock is defined as needed for each one of these parts. So now as I come in and I, I start adding features for machining, let's say I add a mill part setup here, everything will line up accordingly related to the Z and that allows me to do facing on some parts and uh, profiles on the other. Now if you want to become have more control that's where it comes into using SOLIDWORKS and configurations and I could actually change some of these to a different configuration and now I can program them, program them as separate parts so now you can see I have two different configurations of components here and when I come over here and go to my manage parts you now see I have twos and threes if I do update instances it now breaks them out. Now I have different parts that I can program. Even though it's one CAD file, I can split these up. And now you can see that my stock behaves differently too. So depending upon which way you want to machine, one of the nice things about this is it's a very quick and easy way to make adjustments, but then also to be able to use one part and program the way that you want to program. So if I pick these two and make a change, You can now see that that stock is set that direction. So if I look at my stock manager, everything is the way I want, but now I'm behaving with two different components. So if I come over to this part and I have my mill part set up, I can come in and do a two and a half axis feature for facing and just face off the back of that part. And because I'm using mirrors here, it'll automatically add it to both. Um, but my stock automatically goes up to stock on this side it adds it down here at the bottom. So if we generate toolpath, you can see now I'm just facing off those two components. Whereas if I come over to these, I have the ability to create mill part setups of those parts that are independent. And then I can do my machining that is unique just for those components. So let's say we do a two and a half axis feature. And heck, I don't know, we put in some pockets. Um, we pick here, here, and because of our coordinate system being set up with the right Z, it automatically combines these together uh, in the same grouping. So you can see up here, because these Z directions are the same, it auto puts them down here at the bottom. And then from that component, I can now machine it. The next step in fixturing is if I go to the setup in the operations tree, I can go to fixtures, pick those, and then I can tell it to avoid it or just use it for reference. Likewise, obviously your work offset. And this is where right now I'm incrementing it by one. So each part would have its 54, 55, 56, and 57. So now each of those would behave off of their own work coordinate system. If I wanted to make it one, I can make it one. Um, the other thing that comes into play, one quick note, if you look at the setups for each individual part that are here, so you have a setup two here, and you have a setup one here, in the feature tree, in assembly mode, I can change the setup location to go from stock vertex, entity select, or top center of part. So in this instance, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the top center of the part. If I wanted that to be in a unique location, like let's say everything comes from one corner, I can actually use an entity select, pick that point, and it will add that entity for the component. Now what I like to do in this instance, and this may be a little more information than you need, what I do is I create a sketch with a single circle, and I use that to reference if I want all of these parts to have one common location. So now if I come over here, I can say I want to use that sketch at the assembly level for my zero. And what that will do is it will put zero reference from here. 
Do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. You can come off of the top center, but there is a question that generally comes up if I'm using multiple work offsets for my components, as you see here. And to finish off the other one, we'll go to our edit definition. We'll pick the same sketch. And then that now sets the parameters so these four parts come from that one location. Anyway, hopefully this helps with the explanation of stock and settings, as well as things you can do in the assembly mode for configurations to simplify the programming between multiple parts or the same part in multiple setups.